It's time for me to work on another ginormous project, or rather continue working on the one I've already started. We've been busy gathering all the necessary resources for a couple episodes now and paving the way for them to move around. Wait a minute, why are those platforms so weird? No, I probably could have let it be, but here I am. And it only took me a what, soft hour? Hour and a half? I know it would have eventually triggered me into fixing it, but I no longer have to worry about that. Wait, I thought I built this station bigger. Much bigger. What is happening right now? Future me here, I did indeed make the station bigger, but between me working on multiple projects at once, it got lost and now it's gone. Good thing I remember how I did it. For the most part. Hey, it's Prox and boy was that a rocky start. But now, everything's to my satisfactory and we can get started on some real stuff. The plan, in a nutshell, is to expand our power production by an order of magnitude. So we no longer have to rely on this powerhouse to produce our power, all 17-ish thousand of it, and instead make somewhere in the ballpark of 130,000 megawatts. This means building a huge refinery and then pumping whatever comes out of it into some 350 fully overclocked generators. Even thinking about the scale of this is making me a little nervous, but I'm sure it's gonna be okay. That is until I need another expansion, which is gonna be nuclear power. But let's not get ahead of ourselves and focus on the task at hand and sacrifice the swamp for all the shenanigans that need to be done. I think it'd be cool if I built some sort of a centerpiece, like a storage building for all the turbo fuel and then make it so all the pipes are branching off of it in all directions, like an invasive fungus that somehow generates power. And this is about as centered as I think I'm gonna get, so I'll just start and take it from there. That's a good start. Too bad it's completely wrong. You see, I'm planning to make 4000 turbo fuel per minute and it'll make its way here in Mark II pipes that carry up to 600 cubes per minute. This means I'll need 7 pipes, not 4. So sadly, I'ma have to do this all over again. Look at it standing, towering even. Unfortunately, I had to remove the red glowing signs from between the reservoirs to make everything fit. Could have probably still worked them in somewhere but I didn't. I just started and we're already way behind schedule and I still need to build another one of these on the other side of the bridge. My logic is that all the power production with all the generators will take place on land all around the storage monolith. You know, spreading like fungus. And with over 350 generators, which will probably have a hard time fitting in there in the first place, it would be crazy to try and add all the hundreds of refineries, blenders and train stations in there as well. So for production purposes, I'm gonna need to build an oil rig and its own storage monolith. I've gotta say, this one went a lot faster than the first one. Likely because I didn't build it wrong the first time. I still wish I made it a little higher so the sports are visible, but there's no way I'm rebuilding it, so it is what it is. It is what it is! <laughs> Here's a quick rundown of this here contraption. It's quite simple actually. Turbo fuels are gonna make its way from this direction and go to these pipes here that are on the wrong side now that I think about it. But anyway, then the fuels are gonna be pumped up with the help of multiple layers of installed pumps and finally go into unified storage with each stack of fluid storage having only one output and multiple inputs. Then the outputs are gonna lead all the way down here and off to the storage monolith over there in the distance. And I haven't really thought about it much further than this, aside from the oil rig which will provide all the fuel. Speaking of which, there's good news and there's bad news. The good news is time lapses are back, so we'll get to see how an oil rig is born. The bad news is I have absolutely no sense of scale for this one, because I've never really built 200 refineries and over 100 blenders in one place before, not to mention all the other stuff like storage, piping, trains and the rest of it. So I'm just gonna eyeball it and hope for the best. <laughs> it's probably gonna be fine. And if you think I'm just gonna boop everything in… Shush.
man that took a long time. Don't get me wrong, I love having time-lapse cameras back, but boy does it make the game run slow. And I don't mean cinematic 30fps kind of slow, I mean choppy, slideshow, 10-15 frames kind of slow. But at least it's done now. For the most part, I want to add a little bit of detail before I start building the storage systems and the railways, which <clears throat> I totally know how I'm gonna do. So for the detail, I just want something simple. A couple of pillars here and there, a joist or two to support the ceiling, aka the next floor, and some beams to tie it all together into one weirdly segmented looking uh, thing. And there she sits, all pretty and ready to be stuffed with things like refineries, blenders, trains and all sorts of things such as that. So to get started the train needs to be connected to the main platform. Let's replace these to make some room for the intersection. Bring the ramps all the way down. No. No, 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 no. I built the oil rig aligned to the world grid, not the railroad. But you know what? I want to build it and see how bad it actually is. Maybe it's maybe it's not that bad. I've got to say, this isn't that bad. Wait, it is bad. There isn't a single point to connect the railway in a straight line. <sighs> I didn't want to resort to this, but I guess that's what I get for eyeballing things. Let me try and fix this and I'll be right back. Would you look at this? It's perfect. The railway goes nice and straight. The edges are absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Wait, what? Never mind. And if you're wondering, I did not rebuild the entire shebang. That would be crazy. All I did was go on satisfactory interactive map, upload the save file, manipulate the whole oil rig to be in the right spot by extrapolating the coordinate difference between the oil rig and the railway foundation and setting the oil rig to be aligned with those set coordinates and downloaded the save file. And it worked! Now where's a good spot for the train stations? Probably all the way in the back there, so I can use all this leftover space for proper train queuing and those little niches on the sides for storage systems. Smart. I don't have a particular plan in mind at this point and considering that the eyeballing thing went pretty well so far, not counting the massive alignment issue that almost ruined the entire project of course, I'm thinking how bad could it be if I tried it one more time. So the train will come in somewhere here, go left and fork out so the oil goes one way and sulfur goes the other way. Then into the train stations and on the exit side of things, merge back to one lane and out it goes. Simple stuff. Then we gotta suck out all those resources and put them into some temporary storage before sending all of it up to the next floor for production. And I've gotta make sure to use both outputs for maximum efficiency. Even though it's okay not to be 100% efficient all the time. Beautiful. Well, maybe not yet. But once I prettify everything, it should be. And it's prettified. Now the trains can come in, unload all the goodies and be on their way. One thing I wasn't sure about was the storage buffer so I really went to town on it and now each of the six incoming oil pipes have six dedicated reservoirs or over 1400 cubes of storage for a grand total of over 86,000 cubic meters. I haven't really done precise math for this yet and I hope I won't need to so take what I'm about to say with a grain of salt but theoretically this should probably be good enough to offset the transport delay and even if the oil trains stop coming, considering that the storage buffer is filled up, the factory should continue running uninterrupted for almost half an hour, assuming our consumption never goes over 3000 oils per minute. 
amazing. There's also this loop happening, which I didn't tell you about, but in a nutshell, it's here to let the Choo Choo's bypass the onloading stations if they need to and go straight to the export area. It's likely I'll want to export plastics and rubbers to somewhere else to make some other things, so I added not one, but four export stations. So now if I tell the Choo Choo's to come here and give it a couple minutes, we'll see the missions a success. And would you look at that. Sulfur is belting, oil is oiling. What can I say? It all worked out first try, no need to rebuild or fix any of the things. Beautiful. If you want to see how we got here, click the video you see on the screen right now. Leave a like if you liked the video or a dislike if you didn't. Thank you for your eyeballs and I'll see you in the next one.